Hey guys, what's up? Happy Thanksgiving, or at least yesterday it was. Got a new box in here. Add to my little collection of little machines here. 3D printer, laser cutter. Um, I've been messing a lot with Fusion 360 and you know to create the models for these 3D printers and then I started learning tool pass, you know, for the laser cutter. And I needed to get a machine that could do this. Possibly in aluminum. That's the end goal. So let me show you what I got here. It is a. Uh, I'll come back. Right. So it is a My Sweetie um, 3018 CNC machine. One of those old micro CNC machines, but it's not your typical 3018 machine. It's a uh, super beefy extra large stepper all aluminum extra nice spindle so it's it's about 320 bucks on amazon but it's like the super high-end version of the uh, 3018 it's all aluminum no plastic and the rails are a lot thicker and um, also everything is aluminum like normally on a 3018 this would probably either be 3d printed or some other sort of material but it wouldn't be aluminum the actual uh, spindle holder so this one is pretty nuts. It's the strongest one I've seen so far. Um, I have a lot of good ideas for extra add-ons to do, um, you know, make this thing even more sturdy and to collect chips. I do actually have an air blast coming in. I'll show you that. Came with some little bits. I'm not even sure what those are. Tiny. But I need to get some single flute. Aluminum. Yeah, it also has the uh, offline controller. This is a uh, dribble controller. If you're not familiar with these things. Dribble is like a open source uh, free firmware, kind of like 3D printing or Marlin for 3D printing, but it's for like CNC and laser. That's what I'm currently running my um, laser cutter on, but I think eventually I'm going to put this a better board on here. I have an extra MKS DLC because I like to run the uh, Trinamic drivers. All right, so let's cut this open, get all the parts out, build it. Oh, cool. Give me some grease. White grease. Is that lithium grease? Hmm. I don't know. Um, came a little flash drive, too. That's cool. One of the towers on there. Like I said, this is... Oh, came with extra flutes. Wait, wait. So, yeah. Okay. So, there we go. Those are the ones single flutes, I think. That's cool. I might have to probably design a little tray to hold these things. <laughs> like a little tray holder for, for bits. Um, but let me show you this thing. This thing is like super, like w super overdone. Not overdone, but it's like it's way more sturdy than the other versions. So I thought that would probably give me the best shot at doing any sort of aluminum with this thing. Because I did see people doing the aluminum on the cheaper version of this printer. So all right, work. all right. So here's the next layer. This is obviously the bed. But what makes this one a little bit more unique is this is solid aluminum, whereas the pro version actually has plastic sides. And the even cheaper version is actually this 2020 rail. So I'm hoping this will give it more rigidity. Alright, so what's interesting is it looks like the, the more aluminum, like this would be plastic on the, the pro version. Um, but it looks like the aluminum is like painted. It's not like uh, anodized. At least it doesn't look like it is. And then like I said, everything is just totally metal. Like this would be plastic on the, uh, the pro version, or the cheaper version. And then you have your this is a 2040 rail. And then the bottom, look at this. Look how thick the bottom rail is right here. This looks like a 40 by 40. So it's definitely thicker. Every, every aspect is thicker. And I'm not sure what that size that is, the, the rails for the linear rods. I think that's probably 12 milliliter. I'll measure it with my calipers. All right, let's get this thing put together. I guess the instructions are on the uh, on the USB stick, but I mean, there's only one. The only video that I've seen so far that even has this printer is actually the manufacturer making it on the on YouTube. So it's also going like you you fully or something like that or you fully. I'll put the other names of the. It goes by two names as far as I know. You fully and my sweetie. Oh yeah. So, so. if you're wondering what this is, uh, like I said, I cut this out of my laser cutter here. And I wanted to build a bigger CNC machine. Um, so this is actually the side plate of like an ox metal or, or actually a Schwinks. 
uh, CNC machine. But I wanted to make some modifications. I wanted to do like all linear rails. So that's actually what I want to do. I don't know if it's going to be able to cut aluminum with this thing, but we'll see. All right, so on that little USB stick, you have the, uh, it's an MP4, MP4 video on how to build it. And then you basically have a, like a document area I've opened up here, like a manual. And they gave you two versions of software, like, like Laser Gerbil, which is open source free. I already used that already. And then you have like this, uh, Gerbil candle. I've never actually messed with this before, so. And it just uh, it doesn't even, there's not even an installer, just basically a binary. Um, Alright, so I guess we'll mess with this. I also got a probe too, like a little uh, Z probe. Alright, so I'm not going to go through every step by step bolts on how to put this thing together because, <laughs> I mean, it's all basic. Screw in here, screw in there. So what I will do is if I find something kind of weird in the installation, then I'll film that. But uh, I'm just going to go through it and uh, follow these instructions but um, yeah the cool thing about this right here is that when it has this right here it's actually a, a locking <clears throat> you, you want that you want to be able to lock your bearing this Z rod or this is actually a Y rod but uh, you want to be able to lock the rod in place alright so I don't know what the thread pitch on this lead screw is but it definitely doesn't seem as I don't know what the actual pitch per millimeter is but um, it doesn't seem as much as the actual like a 3D printer so, what that does is it makes it slower, but it also gives it more torque, you know, more holding torque, the fact that the threads aren't, so uh, they don't move as much. All right, so here is the bulk kit right here, and one thing I noticed is that there's no lock washers anywhere. So, the fact that there's no lock washers means I should probably use thread locker. So, I'm gonna see if I can find lock washers, but yeah, because the amount of vibrations is gonna vibrate all this loose. So it's not like a 3D printer, you know, where you're just kind of going back and forth. You know, you're, you're cutting the material, which is creating vibration. So, um, yeah, I got to secure these threads. All right, so I might go to the store and get some more of these things right here. I just, I mean, th these are the ones that actually were saying this. It's 16 millimeter, but that doesn't give you enough bite into this aluminum here. And, I mean, this is not like a 3D printer. Like, with, with a 3D printer, I mean, you have a probe, like that BL Touch. That can actually, it can fix issues with a unlevel bed, but a CNC doesn't have that. So this thing has to be as level as possible. Your, or your, your, your cuts aren't gonna be correct, you know? It's gonna be lower on one side than the other. So, like there's no way to compensate uh, uh, une uneven bed, so. All right, I got the bottom down here. So my sweetie, if you're watching this, you guys need to actually have longer screws here and lock washers all through here. Longer here. But uh, yeah, they're a little, little, well, I guess ratchety. Probably working a little bit. Rough, rough bearings, I guess. Uh, I mean, linear bearings would be nice, like linear rails like that on a 3D printer. But eventually, I might do that, especially on, on the this uh, the X axis here. Yeah, I would have preferred a rigid coupler here, but uh, as long as you can lock the bearing in on one side, so the the rod can't go back and forth like that. So I might change that to a solid coupler. Let's see. But yeah, as long as you can lock this at least one side in so it can't flex back and forth. Like this won't move back and forth. Alright, so with any type of CNC, it's critical that you actually have... I mean, if you're going to use this type of lead screw setup, I mean, obviously a ball screw would be ideal, but you need to actually have an anti-backlash. And what that does is it puts... This is not the other side, but... What it does is it puts pressure on both sides of the threads. So it can't move back and forth as much, you know. Like if I didn't have a, another side pushing against the other side of that thread, this would be allowed to move around like a lot more back and forth. We're talking maybe like a half millimeter, but, you know, by actually having pressure on both sides of the thread, it prevents that uh, back and forth, uh, the backlash. All right. So I pushed that in as far as I could and screwed it in. But, uh, yeah, if your part walks while you're cutting, I mean, that's where you actually start losing detail. All right, so it's critical that you actually hit those lock washers because if you don't do that, this whole thing can walk back and forth. All right, I got these things just get those in the spot in place and uh, get them in there. All right, so before you tie these up, you should probably have some sort of square because you don't want your bed to skew. Um, so before I tighten those down, I'm gonna make sure that thing is even with that as much as I can. 
Hey, got the bottom done here, the y-axis done, and uh, it's a cool little knob here. You don't see that in the cheaper little 3018 Pro, the extra knob like that, which I think is actually really nice and helpful. All right, I'm going to build the gantry now. Right, see how this thing moves back and forth like that? Well, that's why you want your a tri-square or some sort of square to make sure this thing is 90 degrees, 100%, before you lock it down. Because if that thing's not 100% 90 degrees, it could actually throw your whole milling project off. Alright, so day two. So it's time to get the spindle on. And electronic control box. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of drivers they are, but I mean, I don't think they would be uh, trinamic. So that's actually why I want to use the other board. The uh, MKS DLC 2.0. Yeah, it looks like there's only obviously three drivers. You have three access. Alright, that's a spindle motor. Interesting, so... I noticed that it was cut and spliced. Or shrink wrapped right there. Extension. But yeah, this is not your typical spindle motor you'd get with a 3018. This is a more high-end spindle motor. It's 200 watt. Yeah, this thing is tight. You can't even get the spindle in there, so I'm going to try to get the screwdriver in like that. Maybe I can pry this open. Like that. Jeez. Alright, this thing should have been opened up a little bit more. Probably about a half millimeter more. Machine differently. Because I can't even get this thing in there. Even actually, even when I'm doing this. So, I think I need to get a file and hit this edge right here the edge right there. That seems like it's the biggest problem right there. Alright, so I have the spindle motor set to my right there and I want to make sure as I'm learning this thing that I'm not going to cut into this actual the bed here. So it can never go lower than this. This is the max bottom out here of the, uh, the axis here. So I can never go into that. So I'll have to build up a uh, board on top. Alright, I got the board and the motor connected here. So I'm going to go back in this box and Get the rest of the stuff here. Yeah, I don't like it. This is a, I mean, I'm not going to use this control board, I don't think, because this is a micro USB. Can't stand micro, well, is it micro USB? No, it's actually the, I think it's mini USB, like the original USB plug, which is actually a lot stronger than the micro USB. Can't stand micro USB. All right, look at that funny little controller. It's tiny. So eventually I'm going to be having the uh, TFT32 MKS on there. Um, that's my end goal with this thing, but yeah, I'm not going to clean up the wires, even though it did come with the uh, wire wraps, just because I know I'm going to change this. So I just want to make sure the thing actually works and, and functions. So I forgot to mention that it is a 24 volt system, which is cool. So I'm hoping that it's going to give me more uh, force, driving force with these uh, steppers. So, all right. Here's the grease it came with. I'm not sure if this is like lithium or silicone based grease or what it is, but just says white grease and it doesn't really look like lithium I mean I don't know hard to say it doesn't say exactly what it is but so I'm gonna uh, lube up the uh, lead screws here and get this kind of lubed up a little bit and one thing I noticed it doesn't have any end stops you know I, I mean yeah, I don't know if I should upgrade this to the Trinamic 2209 but really you can't control that in Gerbil you can do it in Marlin but Gerbil doesn't know what a 2209 driver is or any sort of TMC driver is um, yeah, I might make some end stops for this thing, because what happens is if this thing hits the wall, you know, at least with this one, it's just the belt will start slipping, you know, like, you know? Whereas this one, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put a lot of strain on this motor, so we'll see what happens. All right, ready for right. first fire. I have no clue what's going to happen. So 24 volts, let's see what happens. Uh, oh yeah, that's a power button in the back. Heard the steppers move. So I'm assuming there's gerbil already loaded on this thing. This looks pretty... I guess... Uh, okay, X will already positive. I'm going to try to work on that grease right there. Let's make sure the Z positive. I mean, excuse me, why? <laughs> this thing's funny, you can hardly even see it, so tiny. Yeah, I gotta work on that grease. I 
Alright, let's see if the... I guess you can't do X. Or, excuse me, you can't do Z. Hmm. Or can I? Made some noise. Control. Exit. Oh, that was just a stepper mount. That's what I want to figure this out. Oh, Z's right here. <laughs> oh, that works. Actually, I suppose I'm leaving that thing first. Okay, that's what I did. It just grinds. Pretty close fit. And tight with the, with the lower fan there, but... It's that freaking noise. Alright, I'm going to figure this out, but... I now mean, I can also control this with the USB. Oh, this thing's not running. Oh, it is running. <laughs> Barely, I had to get it to go. I had to push it. Okay. It's almost like it's an alarm or something. I mean, that's hopefully not like a buzzing. All right, well, I'll just have to figure this out. Like I said, there's really no instructions on this thing. Barely, you know. Well, there's, there's, there's pictures, but there's no wording. There's no text. All right, I gotta hook up to my USB. And I'll show you the new stuff that I designed for this thing. All right, so here's my test bench computer, and this is the software that came with it. It's called Gerbil Control, and parentheses candle, as you can see. Right. Spindle. Obviously my bed is not level. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. I'm actually going to be, uh, I'm designing a uh, chip catching system for this thing, so I'll show you that in a second. And it's going to have adjustable legs so I can set it on uneven services. Alright, so I got this other little thing too, it's a little Z-probe. But maybe I'll do an interview about this thing specifically, but it's a, it's a thing just so I can probe the actual tip here and get the exact Z, Z position. Um, but also, let me show you what I was working on last night. So I'm not going to actually do any cutting today. I'm just kind of figuring out all the basics, but um, this really was just an assembly uh, video. Um, I designed this last night, and it's actually a bottom chip catcher. So let me show you how that works. This is on my uh, main development computer. This thing doesn't have a good graphics card, but take a look at that. So this is going to be the base. I'm going to have to turn around. It's a big file. On um, this will be my Thingiverse page. Um, but it's going to be a chip catcher for the bottom of this thing. It's going to be a base, legs, and it's going to be a pull-out drawer. So it'll actually catch the chips that go on the bottom. But I'm actually going to make a whole containment system for ch catching chips. I'm going to have an air blower on here. And uh, I'm going to be designing all kinds of tool accessories. Coolant bottle accessory. Uh, maybe some bit holders. But yeah, there'll be a lot of accessories for this thing. I'll be on my Thingiverse page, but yeah, I'm going to do that. I don't have, actually, my printer's not big enough to print this. You know, this printer right here, or, excuse me, this printer right here is not big enough to print that in one piece. So, I cut it up into fours, and uh, that'll be my Thingiverse page, too. But i got to print this out and see if it works. But that's it. That's going to be the bottom chip catcher. But, yeah, so, so far, pretty good. I mean, it uh, feels pretty sturdy. Like I said, I need to get, like, leveling feet. So I can actually uh, see that out there. All right, but cool, 24 volt system. Everything's working good. So um, now I gotta learn how to do uh, tool pass. So yeah, I already figured it out how to do it in uh, Fusion 360 with the laser cutter, but now I gotta do it with the CNC. But awesome. I mean, it wasn't cheap. It was 300 bucks. So 
Alright, awesome. Cool device here. I'll put a link down below where you can get it, but... Alright.